is some magic. But you know, magic isn't really of this world. I mean, I'm a big D&D &D guy, so technically imagine, or I imagine it all the time, but it's really not a thing. The physical properties aren't there. So it's really interesting how magic does exist. And it exists in something called fractional reserve banking. Now look, there's a lot of shit going on right now. A lot of it, especially with the Wuhan flu sweeping across the nation and governments essentially shutting down. And now we're looking at having a $2.2 trillion stimulus. All right, so a lot of people think, yay, free money or money because the government wants to spend it to keep it going. But that's not really how it works. And I want you guys to understand that. Now, the first thing to take into consideration, and this is monetary magic at its best, is this. This is $20, but what is a dollar? Well, it is a dollar. That's really it. Now, back in the, back before 1970, well, I think it was 1971, we actually, you could actually turn this piece of paper in to get a piece of silver, because one piece of paper was worth a piece of silver. Right? But in 1974, Nixon took us off the gold standard, which was supposed to be temporary by his own remarks, but it ended up not being. But Scott, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't mean anything to me. Get to the freaking point. Okay, I'm getting there, all right? So check this out. What is a dollar? Why don't you take a really close look at the very top, and you can see where it says Federal Reserve Note. All right, so what is a note? A note, for anyone who owns a car or a house, there is always a promissory note attached to it if you are pay making payments on it. A lot of people focus on the payments. That's just a totally different discussion. But that is a promissory note. It means that you owe something to someone and are making regular payments on it. Well, this is a Federal Reserve note which means that essentially by holding this, you owe the Federal Reserve Bank $20. How much sense does that make? Not a damn bit. So to let you know how this kind of works, all right, I want you to understand inflation. Now I've gone over this a lot, but I'm gonna get right to the nitty gritty, make this shit super simple. Uh, and I got this from basically uh, uh, Henry Hazlitt's Economics in One Lesson. Now, I usually use a pizza, but here's what we're going to do, okay? So let's say you have a hundred of these. Let's just say you have a hundred dollars, or Federal Reserve notes, floating around in the economy. That's it. Let's just say it's a hundred. Keep everything simple. All right, so a hundred dollars makes it to where people can buy whatever they need. They can buy the food. They can go out to eat. They can buy a pizza or sunglasses because you got to stay cool, especially during the Wuhan flu outbreak, all right? Now, these usually run, like, let's just say in this economy that these run for, you know, $3, okay? Obviously, they're more than that. Just bear with me. So $3 is what these cost. Now, remember, this $100 that's floating around the economy isn't pegged to anything, meaning it's just pieces of paper. In fact, my daughter at their school, they actually did a little experiment where all the kids created their own money and then they, you know, traded for different things like pencils and stuff. I was like, wow, you guys are actually teaching them the way this really works in the real world. All right, but they don't know it yet. All right, so there's a hundred of these floating around the economy. These are three dollars. Now, let's just say everything is going great, everyone's working, you know, the unemployment rate's low, they're getting paid, they're spending their money, and, you know, they're getting, buying some sunglasses to go to the beach every summer or something like that, right? Uh, and everything is honky-dory. Well, now, let's just say that the government steps in and says, you know, we need more money in the economy because we need, because that's going to help the economy grow. Okay, we need more money flopping around and going different places to make sure that we're actually growing at, let's say, a 2% inflation rate. All right, so they say what we're going to do. We're going to print 900 more dollars. All right, what that means is that 100 plus 900 got $1,000 floating around the economy. Now, how does that work? Well, they get it to people in loans or they give it to companies and they, you know, that produces higher wages. Okay, so ultimately the idea is 
that this money is going to get to who? Us, the consumers. And now what do we do? You know, this day and age, bear with me, what do we do when we get money? More money. We blow it. That's just how it works nowadays because we're in a consumption society. And when we say, oh, I got more dollars, we're actually saying, oh my God, stuff. Right? And so what do we do? We go buy more stuff. And let's say, you know, usually you replace your sunglasses every two years, three years, something like that. Now you got a shitload more money, so you're just gonna go ahead and buy five, 10, 15 extra pairs. But well, all of a sudden, not enough sunglasses are there to meet the demand because the sunglass makers are used to making enough sunglasses for just every now and then for you replacing them every three years. Now they have to ramp up production, and let's say they lost, a, they, um, uh, you know, their materials are starting to cost more because they keep needing more and there's less of it. It's all supply and demand, okay? Fewer sunglasses, more people wanting more sunglasses. What's going to happen? The price is going to go up. But back to the game here. So supply and demand, right? So what that means is for every dollar that's printed, and where does this come from? Nowhere. It's just made. And what, so it, when, basically what happens is the price goes up. How does that work? Well, I'm gonna tell you that right now, okay? So let's say we had $100 in the economy, right? And you have $1. Your dollar is worth one one hundredth. Why is that? There's $100 in the economy. They're not pegged to anything. So your dollar is worth one one hundredth. Well, remember, they printed another $9,000, all right? So how much is your dollar worth now? One one thousandth. And that is reflected by the fact that when people get more money, they spend more and prices go up, all right? So our debt right now, is 24 trillion and on track to be about 30 trillion by the end of the year. What does that mean? It means there are 24 trillion dollars floating around in the economy right now that we know about, and it's about to go to 30. How much is your money gonna be worth? Exactly. Now, let's take this in one more small point here. All right, so when the government needs more money to do whatever, services or go to war or whatever the hell they want to do. What do they usually do? They increase taxes, okay? And what does that do? It takes more money out of your pocket via income tax and things like that, all right? But raising taxes isn't really politically feasible if you want to get reelected. So what do they do? They print more money which makes your money worth less, which increases your prices, meaning your money will buy less. That is no different than them saying, I'm just gonna take that money out of taxes and you will not have it anyway. This is called inflation. They wanna keep it at 2%. It is a tax. They're devaluing, devaluing your dollar and Pretty much it, they're taxing you without you even realizing. Unless you watch this video, make sure to share this because this is something that a lot of people need to know. I'm cutting out now because I'm already at 10 freaking minutes. Have a great day, talk to you soon.